it had to be so confusing to them what the resources were that the white man wanted to because they're like why do you want gold like, what? <laughs> <laughs> you can't eat it you can't use it as a weapon yeah so strange it is in a lot of ways it is uh, you know gold as you said it's it's virtually useless it's it's very soft right yeah so you can't make it into a, a, a what a strange rack. thing to be the most valuable of all commodities it's really shiny <laughs> but how bizarre <laughs> that so but, many parts of the world that agreed upon oh, that. That's right. It's just cross culturally across hundreds of years. They are the uh, Egyptians. You know, yeah. Egyptians call gold uh, the breath of God. You know, the Aztec uh, consider it uh, God's scat. This is the excrement of the gods. You know, that came. <laughs> so strange. <laughs> so strange. Yeah. Now it's not true. I think that uh, once there's some really interesting works going going on right now by. Uh, historian named Benjamin Badley, uh, who is studying in the California. Uh, in, the, in the gold rush, there were Indians who said, oh, hmm, they're going to give me a bunch of stuff for this stuff. Of right? course. And they so they went, to, they went to work, and there were, there were hundreds of Indians who were in the gold fields before the uh, 49ers came. Really? To, uh, yeah, yeah. That was another interesting thing about your discussion with Steve Rennell, that we think of the 49ers as the miners, but there was 48ers. That's right. And they were from a variety of different countries. That's right. That's right. Tasmania? <laughs> Australia. Yeah. Australia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wild. All parts of Asia, yeah. Yeah, remember the, the uh, gold was discovered uh, in the you know, American River uh, on uh, January 24th, uh, 1848. So... You know, three weeks into 1848, uh, the word then began to leak out, made it to San Francisco, uh, and slowly, Greg, this is now 1848, so it takes a long time for news to get from California to uh, to the east. How um, did it primarily get there? Was it? Well, there was, you know, there was traffic back and forth, but it's very slow, overland trails, over, uh, over right. and uh, so forth. Months and months. Months and months. And when it came to the east, uh, a lot of people said, oh, come on. One more rumor about the riches in the West and so forth. So it wasn't until December 4th, 1848, when the president, James Polk, in his annual message to Congress, said, yep, it's true. It's true. Wow. They found gold out there, and there's a lot of it, a lot, a lot of it. And uh, people are making thousands of dollars, uh, tens of thousands of dollars out there. But the point here is that... Uh, from January 1848, when gold was discovered, to the end of 1848, uh, nobody in the East really either knew about this, there were rumors, or, or believed it. So that's why we call the gold rushers 49ers, mm. because it's the next year that they, they go out there in these extraordinary numbers. But the question then is, what, what was happening out there at the time? Right. <laughs> what was happening is that we had the 48ers, people from uh, Oregon, uh, people from Australia, uh, people from Tasmania, uh, people from uh, the first Chinese ever coming over, uh, especially people from the south, uh, Sonorans, people coming from Mexico, uh, Peruvians, Chileans. So when the 49ers get out there, you know, the Americans get out there, uh, and they look around, they say, who are these people <laughs> you know, digging, digging our gold? Right. right. So, so it's what I uh, what I call in the book the uh, second conquest of California, the first one, of course, in the uh, in the war with Mexico. But then uh, suddenly, you know, this is the richest place on earth, quite literally, at that time, and it's being uh, being uh, the gold there is being mined by these people that we considered not Americans. Right. So we've got to get rid of them. Indians, right? Uh, the rest of them, there's this, what's called the Chile War, in which Chileans are, are uh, driven out of the mines. Uh, so these people are, are, are either driven out completely or they're confined to the edges uh, while, they, while, the 49ers, while, the, while the 49ers take over, including, of course, the Indians. This is what triggered uh, the greatest, one of the few cases in which this is clearly genocide, uh, in which there was a concerted formal effort uh, to eradicate Indian peoples uh, who are on these gold fields. You know, the, the California legislature uh, funded bond issues to pay
pay for militias to go kill Indians. Wow. Congress reimbursed California, the legislature, to pay for those uh, to pay for those expeditions. Um, it was it was what uh, Ben Madley who wrote the, the book on this who calls a killing machine. Uh, uh, one of the few times in American history when we could say absolutely yes, this was attempted. This was attempted genocide. And it was specifically because of the commodity of gold. Sure, of course. Wow. Of course. Yeah. You got to remember this was. <laughs> you know, uh, this was the, by far, the richest gold discovery in human history up until up until that time. More gold. More gold was mined in California. In one year, 1852, than had been mined across the world in the entire 18th century. <sighs> one, year, one year, you know. Wow. There's a there's a story uh, from the fellow who was the head of the San Francisco Mint. It was established in the mid 1850s. Uh, he said that at one time they were processing so much gold in that mint uh, that the the furnaces couldn't handle it, and they discovered, uh, uh, to their horror, that gold dust was being blown out of the smokestacks. <laughs> wow! <laughs> and settling, uh, and settling on the area uh, around there. So they had to send out people, you know, for like a quarter mile around the mint to sweep up the gold uh, on the, <laughs> on the <laughs> and sift the, through on, it on the roofs, wow. <laughs> the gilded rooftops, you know. So, wow! So this is a lot of. A lot of gold. That's right? insane. And one result of that was that California, of course, gets this instant population. It never goes through a territorial period. It just goes straight to statehood because there's so many people, right? Well, historically, uh, if the Indians were getting much of a, a protection, it, it came from the federal government. Uh, well. The federal government has, it's not a territory, you know, so it's entire, it's a state government that's in charge there. And the state government, uh, state government's attitude was get rid of them. Wow. Get rid of them. And the population dropped from um, estimated 150,000 uh, in 1848 uh, to uh, 1900, uh, 16,000. Wow. A hundred, so about ninety, about ninety percent. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it was one of the, uh, 